Hello and welcome to Wellbeing Wednesday. We at the Museums of the University of St Andrews will be encouraging you to take 10 minutes for a break to listen to museum story time. The objects in our collections have had fascinating lives and this is our chance to tell you their stories. So take 10 minutes, relax and enjoy. I'm Ailey and I'm going to be your host. Today I'll be recalling some stories of survival from our collections. Perhaps unsurprisingly, in its 600 year history, the University of St Andrews has weathered a few storms. Some of the objects in our collections speak to the challenges that the university has faced and overcome over the last 600 years. I find that there's something quite humbling about reflecting on the adversities that these objects have been witness to in their long lives. A reminder that in the face of the most troubled times, this story continues. First up, we have our medieval maces, which survived the rough wooing, the reformation and beyond. So during the rough wooing, which was a conflict in the 1540s and 50s between the English and the Scots, and the English had the aim of forcing the Scots to agree to their infant queen Mary marrying Edward, the son of Henry VIII, but also they wished to weaken the old alliance between Scotland and France. We know that at this time, two of the three medieval maces were privately guarded and looked after by a couple of masters of arts who were clearly trusted. We also know that St Andrew's Castle played host to our maces for a time. We come across them in an undated document titled The Gear of St Salvatore's College Laid for Keeping in the Castle of St Andros, on which the handwriting speaks to the latter half of the 16th century, so the time of the Reformation. As we're unable to date the document, we can't be sure of exactly what danger the maces were facing, but it could possibly have been in 1559, after the sermon preached by John Knox at Perth, uh, which led to the destruction of Carthusian, Franciscan and Dominican monasteries in the town, and further down into Fife, where Knox went next. It could also have been later in the same year when St Andrews was under threat of attack from French troops. The maces were also supposedly kept in the tomb of Bishop Kennedy for safekeeping for a time. They've survived through all adversity in remarkable condition and are still used in our graduation ceremonies today, which continues their very complex history. Next up is the Parliament Chair. It dates from the mid 1660s. During the winter of 1645 to 46, plague in Scotland's cities forced the Scottish Parliament to leave its permanent home and meet instead in St Andrews. The location for Parliament meeting, which was completed a couple of years prior in 1643, became known as Parliament Hall. Other than the town church, this was the only space available for meetings, formal debates, which were called disputations, and ceremonies. The university library sat directly above it. These spaces were shown to visitors far and wide, including the writer Daniel Defoe, who detailed it in his work A Journey Through Scotland, which was published in 1723. And Parliament Hall is very much still in use today for conferences, talks, amongst other things. The chair itself is made of oak, decorated with scrolls and flowers, and is said to have been used by the presiding officer. Slightly more recently, the chair had been used by the University Debating Society. Interestingly, a copy of the chair made in the 1890s can be found in Falkland Palace. The hereditary keeper of the palace, John Patrick Crichton Stewart, the third Marquess of Butte, was rector at the university in the 1890s. Lastly, we have our cage balls. While not surviving any particular adversity affecting the university or the wider world, cage was a popular sport from the medieval period to the 19th century. It was an early version of games such as handball or racket sports like squash, which didn't require much equipment. Only a wall 
with a hard surface in front and a ball that bounced. You could play with one other person or in teams. You had to strike the ball with your hand against the wall in a rally. Kate was as good as banned at the university as it was liable to break windows and do other sorts of damage. Betting was very common. The playing of dishonest games was punishable with expulsion. We can glean a bit more about this from the diary of James Melville, who was a student at St Andrews in the 1570s in St Leonard's College. His father provided him with bows and arrows for archery, a club and balls for golf, but not a purse for catch pool and tavern, which basically means no money for cage or for drinking in taverns. Our group of cage balls, dating from the 18th or early 19th century, was miraculously recovered from the bell tower of St Salvatore's Chapel. We can conjecture that they might have been hidden there, maybe snatched away by a master who was at the end of their tether and kept out of sight from students. The poet Robert Ferguson, who was a student at St Andrews, documented how Professor David Gregory would shoo away students. Say wheel he'd flay the students ah, when they were scalping at the bar, they took leg bail and ran awa with pith and speed. So, as you've been able to see, the objects in our collections have had long and complex lives which are intertwined with the long and complex life of the University of St Andrews. That story continues. See you next time. Bye.